Hello, I'm Sonia Wood here at Oikos and I'm glad you have stopped by to watch this because I would just like to give you a little bit of support and direction regarding the placements of your children in the Maths UC program. The first thing I want to suggest is you've picked the right moment to give your children the tests. So once you've downloaded the tests and you're ready to give them to your children, please pick the time carefully in that don't set your child down to do a test when they're tired or when you're in a hurry or make sure the time is appropriate because sometimes they can feel a little bit under pressure and overwhelmed by tests. Maybe they have some negative association to tests. So it's even preferable if you just sit with the child alongside them and just support them. Don't even call it a test. Don't treat it like that. Rather than say, Right, now we've got a new mass program that we're looking at getting for you and it's going to be fun. It's got blocks and, and we've got uh, DVDs to watch and there's this funny guy that's going to give us, teach us all about maths. I'm going to do it with you and so on. Rather set the stage like that rather than sit down with the test and make them do it on their own and don't help them. Don't do it that way. I'm just asking you, please, because it's meant to be a pleasant, enjoyable journey. The other little tip I want to give you is... If your child has just come out of grade four or five or seven or whatever and now you in your reference have this grade in your mind and the age of your child and you go on the website and you see this book is for this particular grade, grade one, two, three, four, five, and so they've just finished grade four so I'm going to get them to do the Delta test. I don't want you to look at it like that please. Please rather look at the colors. It's green and orange and pink and yellow and blue or the Greek alphabet, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, and so on. So rather consider what your child's understanding is of maths at this moment. So you can prepare for this little test, the placement test, so that you're making sure you're making a wise purchase and you're not getting a level that is way beneath the ability or way beyond the ability. So you can do a little bit of research yourself about your own child and find out how well they are coping with multiplication for example and play some multiplication games or discover how far along the road they are with addition if they're still little. Then you can have a, a, a general sort of assessment or idea or from what grade they've come from and you can see their previous maths book and what they have learned. Just bear in mind though that you might see in their maths book that they've done fractions up to fractions but they might not understand fractions. So that's what the placement tests help you with. They help you to see where their understanding and their actual ability is. So it can't really help all, all that much sometimes to actually see what they've already done. They might have even been getting 100% in maths because they might have been doing it via rote memorization and now they've just memorized the concept and been able to pass the test. But they might not necessarily understand it. So that's what these placement tests are here to help you with. But if you've got little children, you're clearly going to start at primer, right at the very beginning. You see, we don't even have a primer test book because there aren't tests for primer. There's just the parent book and the workbook, the student workbook. It's only from alpha upwards that there's test books. That's why I've put these test books out here just to give you an idea. I haven't put them all out. It's just to show you for this particular clip. But if you've got a very little one that hasn't even started number recognition or, or doesn't understand anything, never been introduced to maths, then you would clearly start with primer. After that, you'd move on to alpha and just keep moving that child through the process. However, if you've got a little one that's just come out of grade two or older children, and now you're needing to assess whereabouts they slot in, in the program. First thing is to do the preparation, as I have suggested. Second thing is once you've done that preparation, take out the um, tests that you've got prepared that you printed off the website and have a look at them and decide to give your child one that is a good couple of levels below what you think they're capable of. So if you're going to take your child a couple of levels below where you think they're at then you're going to ascertain very quickly when they've done that test that they can just manage it because bear in mind that the tests on the placement tests are giving you what that child would, should be able to achieve at the end of that particular book. Let's say, for example, the beta placement test. It's going to give you a test of what skills have been achieved at the end of having completed the beta book. 
All right, so now you'll see your child can do beta. There's no point in buying the beta book because they would be able to do everything in it. It would be a waste of time and money. So then you would move on to the next book, gamma. And now you see, oh, but hang on. They got half of the gamma test right and the other half wrong. So that's 50%. So now what do I do? Do I get the gamma book or do I get the beta book? Well, you've got to decide, would you like to get beta of something that they've got 100% knowledge of? What would be the point? But gamma, they've got half of it. So maybe the first half of the book, they're not really going to get much from. And the second half is where they're going to start practicing skills that they don't yet have and getting understanding that is currently missing. So now it might seem that it's a little bit of a waste because you're only getting 50% worth of the book. However, if you've got another younger child, you'll be able to use the whole gamma program for the next younger child that's coming through the system. And also the other way to look at it as it's not worth missing that 50% and jumping straight to Delta because right from lesson one, you might possibly find they're running into trouble. And you don't want that. You don't want the beginning of the journey of their maths, you see, experience to be one of a difficulty right from the get-go. So rather go back and rather see that as an investment into the bigger picture, making sure that your foundation there is really good. Besides, even if they started right on the first lesson and they could do it, it's actually just going to motivate and build confidence and assurance to them that they can actually do this. However, you might also find that's a tremendous waste of time for them to be sitting doing half the book of what they really have the skill and understanding in. So then you would just hop into the middle of the book. It's not wasted. That's what I want to encourage you. 50% of that book being done or 25% of it even is worth it because that might be the next problem. You might have done the gamma test and you might find that your student has 75% correct and there's only 25%. Now you don't even have to question this if you know that there's another child coming through the program because it will be used. So you might, when it's getting right near the edge of they got 80% or 90% correct, well now you're only getting 10% utilization of that book. Maybe you do then just go to Delta and where you see the difficulties come in, you stop and you just do some revision and you just help your student to get over those little humps so that they can proceed. And now there's another thing about this whole placement. Let us presume that you have decided to go with Delta. So you got the division for your child and you are now struggling and you are tripping along and it appeared that he, had, he or she had understood Gamma and that he did well with the test but you're just not getting this Delta together. So now you're wondering, do I go back to multiplication or what do we do? In every instance that we have discovered so far, it has worked to go back to the previous book, even if the test result was such that they had a full grasp and understanding of that. Because bear in mind that the way Steve has written is, this whole program is to make sure there is understanding and foundation and concepts skilled and mastered in this level before moving to the next level. So although they might have done well with the test in Gamma, and now you're finding there's difficulty in Delta, there might be some mastery that is required in the gamma level and the, and the multiplication level before being able to do okay and do well with um, delta. So it could be that that happens to you. It could be that you do the test and you decide delta is the spot and then you find, oops, it's actually a bit difficult. And then you would have to go back. But that's okay. You haven't wasted anything because your delta is sitting there waiting for you for when um, the, the student has got what they needed to out of the gamma and being able to move on to delta. Now the same thing might happen in reverse, whereby you got Delta and you found it's too easy. And the students are flying through it and they're actually a bit feeling a bit frustrated because they're not being challenged enough. And they maybe needed Epsilon. <laughs> same thing applies. You then put that aside and you move on to Epsilon. And then what we discovered happened in this instance and with one specific student that I'm thinking about, is they moved on to Epsilon and then actually couldn't cope, couldn't manage. Even though they felt like they were... Just this was just too easy. Mom, I can't, you know, I, this is so easy. Can I not have to sit and do all of this? I want the next book. Some instances it might be wise to make that choice to get that next book and show the student that they actually aren't ready and capable and able to do this until they have completed the skills required in the level before. Because let's remember with maths, it does go concept upon concept. You can't just hop up to pre-calculus without having 
the understanding of all the maths before that. As you can see behind me, there's all the maths there on the shelf from the beginning all the way through to the very end, which takes a student up to the end of grade 12 and ready for any tertiary kind of institution, their maths is at that level of entry into college. That is the level that maths you see goes to. So you don't have to worry about that either, about whether it's taking them to the end of their home education years with regard to if you measuring it against grade 12. I'm sure you'll also agree that because of the manner in which it's done, their maths education is going to be very, very solid because they've had to get mastery with every level before they move on. So that's a very, very big positive as well. If it is so that you have budget limits and you aren't able to afford to get the Delta and then also get the Gamma and then or vice versa, whichever it might be, I do want to encourage you to see maths you see for the, the bigger picture of what it is. It's, it's a very, very valuable resource, clearly. And in actual fact, if we divide it amongst the 12 months of the year and see what we really are spending per month for maths education for our children. It doesn't amount to a huge amount. However, if you do have budget limitations, you don't have to get everything all at once with Oikos. You don't have to buy this whole package where you suddenly have to gather all these funds for everything, all the resources together. You can actually just get one resource, a little bit later get another resource. So if you've got these three months in between where you are sorting out your budget, you can do applied maths, whereby you can have your children practicing maths in an everyday situation. So that can just be a good in-between exercise for your children to practice maths on, in a practical way while you're waiting to get your next resource. So I really do hope you enjoy this maths journey. I know we did. We only use maths, you see, for our children and their education at home. They are adults now and there's not a problem with maths. So that is, thank you, Steve. Um, and the whole team there at Maths UC for making this possible for us. Really, really hope you're going to enjoy this program. I know thousands and thousands of families do. I know professors are impressed with students that come into college that have been using Maths UC. So enjoy the journey and thank you for watching. Bye.